Hey, Kurt. How are you, sir? Hey, David. I am doing fantastic today. Yourself? Uh, same thing, man. Staying safe, staying healthy. I was going to ask, are you practicing safety out there, which is what we're hoping all of our realtor members are doing right now? Absolutely, my friend. Absolutely. We're going to talk about that. So we are live right now. I'm just going to go right live. Special episode. No commercials. No nothing. Going to go right into it. Perfect. All right. So thanks for uh, doing this again. No, and thank you again for the opportunity to uh, speak with you and your listeners. There's a lot of stuff happening very quickly right now. So we want to make sure that we're getting great information out. And thank you for continuing to do that. Absolutely, man. Appreciate you uh, doing this with us on Friday. Kurt, again, is the president of the Mass Association of Realtors and runs a very successful team as well in the area. So you're, you're seeing it from both sides. We're out there in the trenches with our fellow realtors right now. So we're experiencing the same things. We were sharing a lot of the same concerns and finding some great workarounds as well. I've been spending a lot of time in the house trenches myself, Kurt, mostly <laughs> since our last, I don't think I, well, actually I have left the house a couple of times, but I've been working virtually since last Thursday myself. That's been my choice. I haven't, I've chosen not to meet with people in person and actually it's been great. A lot of success with virtual meetings and things like that. But um, I know I don't have the greatest internet connection today and I hope that doesn't affect us too much. I know with uh, probably so many people being home and online, it might be affecting all, all the internet connections. No, absolutely. And, and, and by the way, thank you for mentioning that, because I think that that's important. Um, working from home and socially distancing, taking the opportunity to keep ourselves safe and keep those others safe by taking uh, good social distancing measures and limiting exposure and contact at this point. That is critical. I think you're probably finding the same thing I am. We can do quite a bit leveraging the technology that we have to be able to continue our businesses and to continue successfully supporting our buyer and seller clients, but do it through virtual spaces and do it through an online technique as opposed to in person. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because I'm seeing it. I mean, I, I'm grateful. I got an offer on one of my listings and we accepted an offer yesterday, but I mean, it was it was shown a, a lot over the past couple of days. So that, I mean, there's still realtors out there running around showing homes, writing offers, which, you know, again, I don't want to tell anybody how to run their business, but I know just this morning, I heard Redfin is canceled, all open houses, Remax is canceled, mm-hmm. open houses. Are some of us not being cautious enough? I mean, what, I mean, this is obviously your, uh, just your thoughts, but I'm overcautious, right? I've been in the house since Thursday, pretty much. I think that you're practicing good, sound judgment. So the reality, and, and I know we talked about this a little bit last week, and oh my gosh, how things can change in just one week. It's important to balance between the public health concerns we have and practicing good hygiene and practicing social distance and also fulfilling our fiduciary responsibilities to assist our buyer and seller clients with meeting their goals. Now, I'll be honest with you. I think right now my primary concern is to make sure that people are healthy and those that are healthy stay healthy and those that have issues or are having sickness are able to get the help that they need, and that's what I hope for them. I'll be honest, and I will share with you and your listeners, I'm one of those targeted populations. I have, you know, diabetes, I am overweight, I have heart issues. So if this thing gets me, I don't know if I'll make it through. That said, I'm still out in the field operating right now, but that will probably slow down or halt within the next couple of days. And what I would express to any of our realtors If they're part of a population group that could be significantly adversely impacted by COVID-19, if they're providing services or direct contact or have family members, they really need to take this seriously. They need to make sure that they're paying attention to the CDC, the guidance coming out from the National Association of Realtors, and all of the experts are in the field to provide the best safe health conditions for them both in their personal and in their working environments. That's the first thing. Before we even talk about business practices, let's talk about making sure people are keeping themselves healthy and safe and helping us as a culture, a community, and as citizens to get through this together. Yeah, you know, something I keep saying, Kurt, is with everybody is is be smart. Be smart and be safe, right? And so what you just said is, Based on your situation, you need to be smart and take the right precautions and the right steps to make sure that, you know, what you're doing makes sense. Again, I I get the fiduciary responsibility and all that, 
if a client is expecting me to do something that I don't, and we talked about this on Friday, I'm just going to say, Hey, I'm, I'm just not the right realtor for you right now. And I'm fine with that. I have a few people that did not return my calls because I didn't want to meet with them. That's okay. I've got other people, you know, we had three video conferences with sellers that are going to list, but they're just not ready to, to go on the market right now, but they appreciate it. They actually had fun. One did it. She didn't even know how to do it through her Facebook. We helped her walk her through setting up on her phone and we used messenger and she had fun. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But that's my choice, right? And it's everybody listening. And thank you. That, that, that's the critical thing because we have had a lot of questions on that. It is by choice. Our association is to advocate and to lobby on behalf of our realtors to help them through this time. So we're doing a lot to make sure as we look down that channel, the transaction from the initial consumer contact to the time they go to a closing table, where are they going to hit those trip steps? And we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. But from an actual practice, we are not an authority to tell realtors how they should be practicing. We are giving guidance that we definitely believe very strongly, but they need to be paying attention to the health professionals and the authorities that are talking to them and giving them information on how to remain safe. That's number one. From a business practice point of view, they need to be practicing safely. So, you know, we've talked about, you know, just from our business point of view, one of the things I'm doing now is when I meet with a buyer, I'm opening the doors. I'm asking them not to touch surfaces. They're using antibacterial on their hands as am I. I'm wiping down a doorknob as I go in. If they want to open something, I'll open it for them and then close up on the way out. That way, the consumer is not exposed to any surfaces within the house, and my seller client isn't exposed to anything that might be traveling on part of the buyer. That is, I think, at bare minimum, what uh, agents should be doing if they are conducting face-to-face showings. But again, they have the right to be. It's, we're talking about a group of individual business owners that are servicing individual independent contractors, and they need to be having those conversations between the agent, their broker, and with their clients as to what they are comfortable and not comfortable doing these days. And some clients might be very comfortable because they don't feel that they have a huge risk exposure to the virus, and others may have parties that are immune compromised or have significant risk that may not want people in the space at this time. And it is more prudent for them to pause their activities until we get through to a safer period in a few months, hopefully. Yeah. And you know, Karen, I heard last night they were talking about it. It's also affecting not just elderly and people that have compromised immune systems, but also a younger population. They're seeing a lot more cases in 40 to 50 year olds. So uh, it's definitely something we want to be paying attention to. I think we all have a responsibility to keep ourselves healthy so that we don't overload the uh, medical establishments and they can provide services to those that are in the most critical need of service and medical attention. Now, that said, I do think there is a tremendous amount of work that we can still do as realtors to keep the real estate market moving. I do think that realtors should be ready for a significant level of disruption in the transaction chain, but we're going to be working hard to find solutions for some of those disruptions, and we're going to naturally be able to work through them and get things back on track for when we get through this period. Absolutely. Well, so you mentioned trip steps. I was thinking about bulletproofing. Are those uh, like two of the same, or or, or is that different? I'd say it's We're talking the same language there. We definitely are, David. So when you look down the course of the transaction, you can see where you're going to have very natural points where we might have challenges. So for example, you have when you're meeting with clients, and that is the challenge we were just talking about in terms of face-to-face meeting. So as you're looking down that transaction, you go through the initial client consultation, You're opening it up into showings or being shown if you're on the list side. You have the offer step, the home inspection step, purchase and sales. You're going to have appraisals going in, and then you have the closing process, which includes smoke certs, final water readings, title work, and all of that that happens as you're heading into the closing table. When we're looking down that transaction, we're saying, okay, where are we likely to have disruption? 
We may hit a point where appraisers are not willing to go into properties. That could be a disruption point in some place where we need to find a solution. Could it be a drive-by appraisal? Could it be something else? We'll be talking about that, I'm sure, in the coming weeks. We have home inspectors. Will home inspectors be entering properties? As we get to the back end of the transaction and doing title work, will title or will closing procedures get impacted by either the ability to get a smoke certificate, which we're hearing about a lot around the state right now, and we're working hard to get that resolved for our realtor members, or will it be pulling a municipal lien certificate or a final water reading if a municipal entity is not open to do that and is not able to do that virtually? So I would expect there will be disruption. I'm very confident that we will find solutions to that and we'll find ways to keep things on track. But both buyers, sellers, and realtors need to understand we're all in this together and we're going to need to work together to make sure that we keep things moving forward. And if they can't for a period of time, that we're creating reasonable solutions together to make sure that we hold things together. Yeah. Uh, One of the things, the messages I keep hearing consistently is now is the time to be in touch with your clients, right? Uh, Be in communication with the people you know. I've spent the last three days in the house calling everybody in my database. I'm talking to people I haven't talked to in nine years. (laughs) Right? It's a great opportunity. It's fun, man. I'll tell you, they're, (laughs) they're happy that I called. And I'm calling from a place that I'm just checking in on you. I know I haven't talked in ages. My apologies, but how are you, man? How are you dealing with this? And the people love it. They love that we're calling, you know, and I'm not asking them for business. It's 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 not about that right now. It's just how you do. And I have a pause in a moment. Just wanted to check in with you. It's a great opportunity. I'm telling people, I'm, you know what? I'm using this opportunity. I'm stuck in the house. I'm going back and I'm calling <laughs> calling on my database of people I haven't called in ages, you know, so I my apologies. But, <laughs> and, uh, it, you know, they get a kick out of it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've never had a past client that I've called say, hey, I, I don't know why you're calling. They're always like, how you doing? How's it yeah. been? And you, you spend a couple of minutes and get caught up. It's a great opportunity for that. I mean, when you talk about opportunities, this is one of those rare opportunities that we get as realtors, and we really need to take advantage of it. I'm pretty confident that we're going to have a period where there's a little bit of a slowdown or potentially even things stop for a little bit. And then we're going to far out and we're going to go back into the market. When we do, the market is going to be, in my opinion, absolutely hectic because in Massachusetts, we've continued to see huge explosions within population. People have been moving into Massachusetts and coming to Massachusetts. And there is such strong desire for home ownership within the Commonwealth. And we also have a short supply of inventory. I think we're at about you know, one to two months of inventory. Now with sellers potentially holding off for a little bit, that's going to even get worse and worse. So we have very limited inventory on the market. So we're going to have an explosion when we come back on. So for realtors, this is a great opportunity to do just what you're doing, David, reconnecting with their past clients dusting off their CRM tools or becoming familiar with how to use their CRM tools, developing and working on the business areas they want to. And I'm going to make one very specific plug, which I think will help us as an industry. I always hear from practitioners that they wish there was more professionalism within our industry. We have an incredible program called C2EX, Commitment to Excellence, which is a free program self-paced learning that's offered by the National Association of Realtors and is designed to give that C2EX certification to a realtor member and really take their level of knowledge and practice to a much higher level. I would encourage your listeners to go to NAR.com and check out C2EX and spend some of the time working in that program as well. I'll track down that link on NAR and I'll add it to our show notes, Kurt. So appreciate that. Thank you. Let's do this. So, I mean, I know this is good. We want to keep this short and sweet. This news is changing every 10 minutes. So what would you say, what are the three top tips that we want to give our listeners to walk away from? And, and, you know, listen, we want, we want to keep our business moving as well, but at the same time, we want to be safe and we'll be smart. What would you say are the three top tips right now? I'd say the three top tips, safety first. You definitely need to be practicing good hygiene, good social distances, and good distancing, and practice good techniques to keep yourself and your clients safe. And I really think anyone that's out there practicing open houses right now really needs to rethink that practice. Two, 
focus on technology in your business. You can do a lot, both generating, developing uh, business and servicing your clients with the technology that's out there virtually through um, communication and video. You can do most of what you need to do and keep the market moving, utilizing and leveraging technology. Three, great professional development point of view. Focus on professional development and get there. And then four, I am going to add a fourth. Focus on what you're seeing in the chain between the time you get with your client and the time you go to closing. Anticipate, and as you said, David, bulletproof the transaction and be prepared for some of those bobbles. And what we're going to continue to do is work and find solutions for our fellow realtors to help get them through those bumps in the road between there and in the closing of the transaction. Kurt, listen, man, I, I just appreciate your time. Hopefully we do this again in a couple of weeks and we'll have some more positive you know, with regards to everything that's happening, right? Some some more positive news to share. Absolutely. And dude, man, you know, I, I appreciate you sharing that with me and our listeners. You you have some health concerns, my friend. I it might might be time. Why wait a couple more days, man? Get virtual now, man. Practice what you preach. Maybe today's the day. Yeah, I mean, why not, bro? Why not, my friend? It's not worth your health. You know, uh, Gary Keller said this to me years ago. He said, if you don't take care of your body, where are you gonna live? I love that saying. That's a good point. Good health first. Simple and profound, my friend. Yeah, we've got to take care of our health first. So maybe now's the time, my friend. And if I can get that last sound bite in there, that is number one. Realtors, take care of your health and take care of the health of those that are around you and make good decisions, both in the practice of working and in your personal practices. Be smart. Be safe, my friend. Appreciate your time. Thank you. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks, David. Masters, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening to this episode. You know, I get it. You're ready to move on. And real quick before you do, a couple opportunities for you. First off, I just want to, if you could give me a review, it helps tremendously for rankings as well as helping us get better guests, everything. It's just awesome. So if you could, wherever you listen to podcasts, if you're on iTunes, that's amazing. If you're using Android, wherever you listen, be phenomenal. I just really say I appreciate that. I just launched a brand new Facebook group. It's really excited to, to get this thing going. The uh, goal is every day bring inspirational stuff, videos, stuff that's not going to be accessible to everybody, certain trainings, opportunities, webinars, everything. So it's a free group, guys. Just go to Path to Mastery. Uh, search Path to Mastery on Facebook. You'll find a group. Request access, and I will get you in right away. I promise you. And books. I, I gosh, I talk about free books all the time. You you probably already heard me talk about free books a million times. And I know everybody loves a free book. So just go to davidsfreebook.com on Audible. Uh, right? Go to David's Free Book. Get yourself a copy of any of the authors that we've interviewed. I mean, why not get a free book? Uh, it, it's free. It's amazing. Uh, davidsfreebook.com and again I just want to say thanks and as you know health and nutrition has always been number one for me just completed my first Ironman guys Lake Placid 70.3 in the books uh, goal was break 7 hours did it 6.49 next year I'm breaking 6 hours guaranteed I'm happy I did my first one I cruised through I followed my coach's plan and cruised through and next year I'm going all in anyway the reason I'm sharing that is because I've, I'm on Advocare products. I've been taking them for a long time. Uh, tremendous health and nutrition products. If you're interested in learning about the products, go to LiveLongerSmarter.com. LiveLongerSmarter.com. You can check out the products for energy, protein, health, nutrition, vitamins. Anything you need is there. My friends, thank you. Uh, and then please give us a review. You absolutely rock and I look forward to connecting with you on the next episode. And if you need anything from me, shoot me an email, david at davidihill.com. Or if you like, call me, 774-314-1107. Thank you.